Sunday nights we've been going through a series of keys to spiritual growth, and uh, I thought I would share one of those messages this morning. Uh, for those of you who are not able to come on, on Sunday nights, Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to be looking at the subject of prayer. Now, we've talked about prayer before, but uh, there's, there's plenty to say. So, Ephesians chapter 6, I'm going to start reading in verse 10 and read right on down through verse 20. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. All right, we'll stop reading there. Um, prayer. It's an important, basic part of, of our lives as, as believers. In looking at this subject of spiritual growth, uh, we saw that the master key is the Bible. You will not grow without getting into the Bible. Uh, the Bible says in, in 1 Peter to, that we're to, to desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. It's by God's word that, that we're going to grow. Let me ask you, what have you done with your Bible this week? You know, we can't just put it under a pillow and sleep on it. We're going to have to open it and read it and think about it and memorize it and meditate on it and obey it. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's one of the keys we looked at. Uh, for us to grow, we not only have to get into the Bible, we have to obey it. I find some people are, are very... Um, particular about which parts they obey. <laughs> uh, there's parts, boy, they'll stand. Uh, I've had people there, they're fundamentalists when it comes to one part, but then they ignore another part. Listen, it's not enough to use the King James. You've got to do what it says. <laughs> you know, when God says, be ye kind one to another, that's not just a suggestion. I'm getting off, off the subject here. But uh, listen, we, we need to understand, the key is the Bible. Uh, you're not going to find it at the doctor's office. You're, you're not going to find it at, at the schools. You're going to find the way to grow is from God's Word. And the purpose is for the glory of God. You know, the problem many times is we think, if I grow, maybe I'll feel better. Yeah. Maybe my life will be nicer. That's not the point. Listen, you can trust the Lord and suffer persecution. We're going to talk about that tonight. Uh, let me ask you, does your life honor God? That's what our purpose in life is. And some of the keys we looked at are obedience, uh, filling of the Spirit. Listen, you need God's Holy Spirit to help you to grow. He's the one uh, that uh, has said He'll help you understand His Word and give you strength to obey. Uh, confession of sin is so important. We looked at that a few weeks ago. Uh, sin will keep you from growing. Uh, I don't know, I guess it's, it's like the diseases that affect a plant, you know. Uh, if we're not confessing sin, it'll keep us from our, from our Bible. It'll keep us from witnessing. Uh, it'll keep us from o obedience and prayer and so on. Uh, loving God, we looked at. Uh, that's, a, that's such a basic key to, to growing. And today we're looking at prayer. Someone has called it unlocking the inner sanctum. You know, really, if you think about it, to grow spiritually, what we're wanting to do is get closer to the Lord, aren't we? And to get closer to the Lord, we have to pray. We've got to talk to Him. You know, in your home, uh, you're not going to grow 
go closer together as a family if you're not communicating, are you? And, and as Christians, for us to grow, we've got to communicate with the Lord. To get closer to the Lord, we must pray. And yet, many Christians do not pray. It's true, isn't it? Prayer should be like breathing. Breathing should be constant and natural, shouldn't it? If you have to think about your breathing, you're in trouble. (laughs) Breathe, breathe, breathe. No, you don't want to be like that. And prayer should be like that. It should just be natural to be in communication with your your God and Savior. You know, we saw there in Ephesians 6, verse 12, uh, he talks about standing and falling. He talks about wrestling. Well, if you've ever seen real wrestling, I'm not talking about this phony baloney stuff, but, you know, real wrestling, man, somebody grabs you and boom, you're down, you know, if you're not careful. And God says it's, it's a spiritual battle we're in. It's not, the physical is not the main thing. It's the spiritual things. That's why he says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. God wants us to, to stand, and sin will keep us from prayer. Sin will keep us from the strength that we need from the Lord. God tells us to pray. We get so caught up with self, we get so caught up with the physical, that sometimes I think we forget about God and the spiritual dimension uh, that life has. In uh, Ephesians 6 there in verse 18, you may have noticed, he gives us four alls of prayer there. That's that's the main thing we're going to look at today. Praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Four things we're going to look at about prayer. And then he gives us an example in his own life. Uh, the first one is this. We're just going to stop right here and just have a moment of remembrance. Um, why don't we stand? Would that be all right? Uh, this is a time when we remember those who've died uh, defending our our country and uh, just really for us thanking the Lord. So we'll just take one one minute and then Neville will, will pray for us. that war is a horrible thing um, that's necessary in order to protect righteousness and to um, prevent the spread of evil. We thank you for those who, who died for us. We thank you for those who are serving even now mm. um, to protect our freedoms, to protect, to protect our ability to have religious freedoms. Lord, we acknowledge that Mm. Man has claimed that that first world war was supposed to be the war to end wars, but we know that's not true. And while men are alive, there's no <coughs> war. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming, and mm. there will be that one great war that ends all war, and that all kingdoms will become your kingdoms, and that we will rule in righteousness. We thank you for your grace and mercy that you show to every human being that we can receive the righteousness that we don't have just by believing, by having Mm. faith in Christ and acknowledging that we are sinners and need forgiveness and that he is God and Christ who died for us. We pray 
pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. It's a, it's a sobering thought, isn't it, to think of those who've, who've died in, in battle. And uh, we're fortunate to live in a, a free country uh, where we have religious freedom and uh, freedom of movement, uh, but especially to apply it to how Jesus died for us and has made a way for us to, to be free spiritually. Thinking about prayer, he gives us four areas here in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. And the first one is praying always. Now, I know this sounds strange, but the Bible wants us to have the attitude as Christians that we're in constant communication with the Lord. It's talking about the frequency of prayer. You know, I talked earlier about our breathing. Uh, when do you breathe? Always. You know, in, out, it, it, it's just a constant thing. And talking to the Lord is, being in the presence of the Lord doesn't always mean that you're talking to him, but you're constantly aware of, of his presence. Uh, there's many verses, Luke 21, he says, Watch ye therefore and pray always. Uh, Romans 12, continuing instant in prayer. Uh, Colossians, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. In Philippians, he puts it this way, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. There's the everything and nothing of the Christian life. I love that verse. Be careful for nothing. He said, don't worry about things, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Pray about everything. And then, of course, the, the famous verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Now, he's not talking about kneeling down and folding our hands and closing our eyes and bowing our head. I mean, that's, sometimes we pray like that. But he's talking about constantly being aware of the presence of the Lord. There's an interesting illustration, I think, in Acts chapter 12. You're probably familiar with the story where they had killed some of the apostles and uh, they arrested Peter with the prospect of putting him to death. Acts chapter 12, it says, uh, Peter, uh, verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And the people began to pray. And if you know the story, you can read it later, God miraculously releases him from prison. I mean, the doors open and he walks out. And, I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a miracle. And he goes to the house where they're praying. In, um, let's see, uh, verse 13 Peter knocked at the door of the gate, and a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate, and listened to their responsive faith. They said unto her, Thou art mad. <laughs> she constantly affirmed, it was even so, they said, It is his angel. <laughs> they spiritualized it. Isn't it funny? You know, here they are, pray, doing what, just what God said, praying without ceasing, but when God answers it in a miraculous way, they say, they can't hardly believe it. I can't say I blame them. You know, we'd probably be the same. But we need to just have that attitude of, of prayer, of, of crying out to the, to the Lord. Listen, life is tough. You know how it's tough for you. It's tough for everybody. You know, sometimes I stand here waiting to preach, and I think, who are you to preach? What do you have to say that anybody wants to listen to? You know, you, you, can, you can have such difficulties in in doing what you know is right. And God says, we can cry out to Him. God will help us. Jesus will help us. We need to be in a constant attitude of prayer. Listen, there's not some place you've got to go to pray. There's not some format you've got to use or special words. It's just a heart cry out to God. And sometimes it, it, there's not even a sound. Listen, you can be praying to God in, in a crowd of people, and they don't hear you, they don't see you, but you're, you're saying, God help me, God help me. We need to be conscious of our God. God has promised He'll never leave us or forsake us. Prayer is a wonderful thing. We can communicate with our God anytime, any place. In Romans 12, it says, Of Him and through Him and to Him are all things, to whom be glory forever and ever. What he's saying there is everything relates to God. 
Everything that happens in your life relates to God. Listen, when you sleep, that relates to God. Thank you, Lord. If you wake up, talk to Him. If you wake up. That's an ominous sound, isn't it? <laughs> uh, when you wake up. Uh, if you wake up in the night. When you wake up in the morning. Uh, you know, thank the Lord. Lord, here's another day. Thank you. You see the neighbors. You, you pray for them. Maybe you know their needs. Uh, you know they're not saved. Lord, save them. As you go about your business, uh, everything that happens has a reference to God. Always communing with God, praising Him, asking Him, uh, confessing. Not, I hate that, that word, those words, uh, I'm going to go say my prayers. You know, there's people who do memorized prayers, you know, or, they, or written prayers. They're not necessarily wrong, but it's not really praying, is it? Uh, we need to be in, in communication uh, with the Lord. It's like walking together. If you're walking with somebody... I hope you're not one of those who's always talking, but, uh, you know, most people when they walk together, they're not always talking, but they're always aware that they're with someone. You know, they don't run into them, they don't leave them, they don't, you know, they're aware of their presence. That's what we're talking about. Uh, the Bible says that they're praying always, and, and also being conscious of others. Uh, you know, we don't want to just pray for ourselves, it's, we want to pray for ourselves, but not just for ourselves. Uh, selfish people mainly pray when they have a need. You know, for some people, that's the only time they pray. Oh, I've got a need. God, help me. And, and if God doesn't do what they say, a lot of times we get it backwards, don't we? He's God, we're not. We ask, we don't tell. And God sometimes will say no, or wait, or i got something better for you if you'll just wait. Uh, we need to pray. We need to be aware of the Lord. Someone wrote a song Lord, help me live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer shall be for others. We need to be praying for ourselves. We need to be in communication with the Lord. We need to be praying uh, for others as well. Praying always is the frequency of prayer. The second one there in, in verse 18 is with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. With all prayer. This is the form of prayer. Now, the word prayer is a, is a general word with a lot of variety. There's a lot of variety to prayer, isn't there? You know, sometimes we'll say, let's meet and pray. You know, we organize it and we, we do it publicly. Uh, other times, you know, we, we do it privately. Most of my praying is on, on my own. You know, I'm, I'm just walking along or I'm studying. Or, uh, I've often told people, my best sermons I preach in my office, but you can't be there. <laughs> you know? Uh, you, you walk with the Lord. Most of it's private, but some of it's public. Uh, some of it's out loud. Some of it's silent. Some of it's spontaneous. Sometimes we're asking. Sometimes we're praising. Sometimes we're confessing. You know, we might be kneeling or standing or laying on the floor or driving our car or anywhere, everywhere. Uh, maybe a little bit lighthearted, but uh, one of my favorite poems. Is called How to Pray. So just bear with me here. The proper way for a man to pray, said Deacon Lemuel Keyes, the only proper attitude is down upon his knees. No, I should say the way to pray, said Reverend Dr. Wise, is standing straight with outstretched arms and rapturous upturned eyes. Seems to me his hands should be devoutly clasped in front, with both thumbs pointing toward the ground, said Reverend Dr. Blunt. Last year I fell in Hodgkin's well head first, said Cyrus Brown, with both my heels a sticking up and my heart a pinting down. I made a prayer right then and there, best prayer I ever said. Praying this prayer I ever prayed was standing on my head. <laughs> <laughs> we can pray anytime, we can pray any place, we can pray in any position. Uh, listen, uh, there's no time that isn't the right time to pray. Amen. That doesn't mean you're not doing something. <laughs> There'll be times you'll be praying and doing, and uh, that, that's true. He uses then a more specific word. He talks about supplication. With all prayer and supplication. Supplication uh, it means to ask. God wants us to ask. Have you ever had somebody say, why didn't you tell me or why didn't you do this? And your answer was, because you didn't ask. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's that way with the Lord. You know, he wants to do something. He wants to tell us, but we don't ask. God wants us to uh, be involved with supplication. And supplication basically is a specific request. 
you know, it's not, Lord, bless the missionaries. It's, Lord, please help Francois Soret as, as he has this cancer and, and heal him. Help his family as they, as they move their location. And, uh, you know, a supplication is specific. Our children don't come up to us and say, oh, Father, please bless me. <laughs> they say, Dad, can I have an ice cream? <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're pretty specific, aren't they? And uh, can be very repetitious as well. But supp <laughs> supplication, uh, it's a very specific word. And then he says, in the Spirit. All prayer should be in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help us as, as we pray. In uh, Romans chapter 8, he, he talks about that, that uh, the Holy Spirit helps us. Romans 8 verse 26, when he says, The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You know, the Holy Spirit is helping you in your prayers. You, you need to re remember that and, and realize that in the Spirit. The, the Spirit leads us in Jesus' name. He will help us to know what we can pray for with Jesus' authority. He can help us to know um, what would be Jesus' will for our lives as we pray. I find it helpful to put my prayers in words, out loud. It's good to hear yourself praying because sometimes you, you know, the Holy Spirit will help you then to, to think, that, that doesn't sound right, or that's, that's exactly right. God's Holy Spirit, being led of the Lord in prayer. He says, praying always. He says, with all prayer. And then the third all there in, in verse 18 is with all perseverance. With all perseverance. This has to do with the manner of prayer. He uses the word watching. Watching thereunto. With all perseverance. That means being alert. I think sometimes we, we're so careless in our prayer life that we're not really praying about things that, that we need to. We need to be praying ahead. Uh, in, uh, in 1 Peter, he uses this phrase. He says, be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. We need to be people who are aware of what's going on around us and, and what's happening in, in front of us, you know, in your home. Now, when we have an emergency, yes, we should pray. But listen, there's things you know are going to happen in your home. Listen, if you have a child, eventually they are going to reach puberty, you know, if they, if they live. Don't wait until that emergency, right? Pray about it from the time they're born. Uh, pray about, the, you know, you hope they're going to get married. Pray that they'll have the character and, and, and that they'll choose a good partner and that they'll be a godly person. You know, watch. You know in your home that there's going to be problems between husband and wife. I mean, you go on and on, couldn't you? Don't just wait till you have an emergency. Pray about it. Watch unto prayer with all perseverance. In your neighborhood, know what's going on in your neighborhood. In your church. Listen, our church goes through things. We've gone through some, some really difficult things in the last year or two. Are you even aware of that? Are you praying? Are you praying for your pastor? We need to be praying for each other with all perseverance. He says, watching thereunto. And that word persevering means stick to it. Keep praying. Sometimes you think, oh, God, God's not answering my prayer. Well, you just you don't always know, do you? Sometimes God is, you know, one of our, our least favorite answers is wait or we'll see. Persevering. And he says, making supplication. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and, and supplication. Listen, anything in God's will, you can ask him for over and over and over again. Now, if you're praying for somebody to be saved, I've heard testimony. Prayed for him for 50 years before he got saved. You think God gets tired of you every day saying, Lord, will you save my, my, will you save my son? Will you? I don't think so. With all perseverance. Praying always, praying with all prayer, with all perseverance. And then he says, for all saints. We need to pray for each other. Uh, we're in a common battle. You know, we're mostly aware of the battle we're in. Uh, I see my battle. You see your battle. We're, we're in the same battles. Uh, everybody's going through difficulties. Uh, we all have, have a hard time. 
And, and like he says there in Ephesians 6, 12, it's mainly a spiritual battle. It might come out in the physical or the mental or lots of different things. But the main thing is the spiritual battle. How are we doing in that spiritual battle? Now listen, we are dependent on each other. If I don't pray for you, who will pray for me? You know, I can't just look at it selfishly. I've got to look at it, what my responsibility. I'm to pray for you. Now, we minister to each other by prayer. Now, occasionally I will tell someone that I pray for them. I don't do that to brag on myself. I do that to encourage them. Because I know how I feel when somebody says, Pastor, I'm praying for you. Or, or they say, I pray for you every day. And there's people I can genuinely say that. You know, people in our church, listen, I pray for you every day. Every day. And my goal for you is that you be like Jesus. And, and I hope you'll pray for me. Uh, for all saints, we minister to each other by prayer. As a church, we need to take God's call to prayer seriously. Prayer is a key to spiritual growth. Then he gives us an example. This amazes me. In verses 19 and 20, he says, and for me. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. Oh, surely he doesn't need people to pray for him. He's the Apostle Paul. But what does he ask him to pray about? That utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. He says, pray for me that I'll have a message, that I'll know what to say, and that I'll, I'll be able to say it boldly. That's the Apostle Paul. You think you struggle knowing what to say and trying to say it. So did he. We're in this thing together, folks. There's no such thing as a super saint. There is such a thing as a super savior. Now, we're trusting the Lord. And, you know... In our weakness, we see the strength of the Lord. God doesn't ask you just to use your strengths. He asks you to serve Him in however He calls you. You know, Paul said, pray for me. He knew that he had no power without prayer. And whether we fail or succeed depends on the, the spiritual battle. It's not the physical. It's not the mental. You know, as you spend time in prayer with the Holy Spirit, under His supervision, your life will be molded into the image of Jesus Christ. He will help you. He'll help you to understand Scripture better. And others will be blessed. Now, the, the basis of our prayer life is our relationship to God. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, He gave us what we know as the model prayer. And the first two words are, Our Father. Our Father. See, we go to God when He's our Father. Now we need to understand, as we come out of the womb, we're not saved people. We're natural. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. And Jesus said, you must be born again. As many as received Him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. Who can call God their Father? The children of God, the sons of God. And that's the new birth. That's salvation. And there's a, there has to be a time in a person's life when they say, Lord, I've, I've run from you. I've sinned against you. I've wronged you. I, I see my sin. I know I deserve hell. Lord, please forgive me and save me. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose again. Make me your child. There needs to be a time when you confess him as Lord. And receive him as your heavenly father. Our father which art in heaven. You know the devil believes there's a God. But he's not saved. Just believing in God doesn't make you a Christian. It's the, it's the new birth. It's trusting Jesus Christ as your savior. Jesus said I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the father but by me. Jesus is the only way. It's not by baptism. It's not by being good. Your parents can't get you to heaven. God has no grandchildren. You have to be a child of God. Let me encourage you this morning. Prayer is a wonderful thing. And the first prayer God wants to hear from you is, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me for Jesus' sake. Have you ever prayed that? Has that ever been a part of your life? Has there ever been a time in your life when you've trusted Christ as your Savior? 
If not, listen, today can be the day. The Bible says now is the time. Today is the day. Don't expect another day. When Jesus knocks at your heart's door, that's the time to open it. Say, Lord, come in. Save me. Be my father. That's what he wants. It's not his will. He says that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What a wonderful thing. The one who knows every sinful thought you've ever thought, and every sinful action that nobody else knows, the one who knows all that loves you the most and died for all those sins. There's no fool in him. God loves us, and he's made a way through Jesus Christ. God became a man. You read some of the prayers that Jesus prayed. What a blessing. You read John 17, but then even just on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then Jesus' last cry, I guess it was, it is finished. The work of salvation is done. Listen, there's nothing you need to do. You just need to believe it and receive it. <laughs> He's done it all. And it's complete. What a wonderful Savior He is. And then He gives us His Holy Spirit as a down payment. Just a little foretaste of heaven. What a blessing. This morning, I want to encourage you to trust the Lord. And as you've trusted the Lord, I want to encourage you to just Enjoy his presence. Let him encourage you. Let him be the father that he wants to be to you. But we're going to close with a, a song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That's a blessing, isn't it? Page 345. And I want to encourage you this morning. If you're not saved, if you're not sure about eternity, uh, while we sing, I, I'd encourage you to, uh, to come and, and let someone show you from the Bible how to be saved. As we think about this subject of prayer, we, I hope you want to grow spiritually. And prayer is a, is a big part of that. God's word is, is the key and prayer. Uh, Azrael, you come and, and lead us in this song. What did I say? Page 345 if you're using a book.